more about that? So that we can get cable in here so that we can uh, stream it live, uh, whatever. Like I said, we're in the dispensation of grace right here. Up there and down there. That tells me that, gra that, that, that uh, uh, Reed's not in grace. All right, Titus chapter 3. I want to talk to you about the appearing to the Apostle Paul and see some things about it. In Titus chapter 3, verse 1, he said, Put them in mind to be subject to the principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. In those seven verses, you've got a lot, a lot of information but um, this is a, also a pastoral letter. Uh, Titus was a teacher and a preacher, pastor, whatever. You've got Timothy, first and second, and Titus are mainly the pastoral letters to uh, teach and bring forth faithful men that would bring forth the ministry that Paul had. But in, uh, in verse 4, you will notice it says, But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Now turn to 2 Timothy, the other pastoral that we'll look at, in 2 Timothy chapter 1. There's very little things taught about Paul in the religious world today because most dealings are with Peter, Paul, uh, Peter James, John, and the 12 apostles. And <clears throat> they were sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's Matthew 10. Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Matthew 15. Paul was sent to us. He's the Gentile apostle. And it's very clear. The scriptures are very clear on this. And so we need to train our thoughts of how this came about and why it came about. Why would God's son appear to Saul of Tarsus, who we know to be Paul in accordance to uh, Acts 13? Why would he appear to this man who was a Benjamite tribe of Israel and this man did not believe that Jesus Christ was the son of God he did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ he still believed in the Old Testament law yet he didn't keep the law yet he thought he kept the law but he was doing it traditionally and on and on and he persecuted and, and blasphemed against the idea that Jesus Christ was the son of God and yet the Lord appears to him one day and saves him so we got to know, we got to understand some things about this. Now in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us, that would be Paul of verse 1, Timothy verse 2, the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner. So this tells me that this is his prison ministry. When he was in prison, he writes this letter. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us. Now, there's no, there's a lot of people say you can't know you're saved. This man knows he's saved. He's our pattern in salvation, 1 Timothy, which is the first letter. And he, <clears throat> he said, who has saved us and called us with a holy, with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began but now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now in this verse also, in verse 10, is it past tense, the appearing? Was Titus chapter 3 past tense? Was the appearing past tense? Now the reason I'm saying this, we've got to understand some things in this scripture. Timothy, which is past tense. So, had the appearing already happened? At 
what I want you to understand. The appearing had already happened. Okay? Now, <clears throat> turn with me to uh, uh, Acts 26. The book of Acts, chapter 26. Now, the Lord is going to explain here through Luke, who writes the book of Acts, he's going to explain why he appeared to Paul. Now, folks, Paul did not deserve the appearing of the Lord, nor do you and I. We do not deserve the grace of God. The grace of God is because there is none good in this room. There is none righteous. There is none that understand. There is none that seeketh God. That's Romans 3, 10, 11, 12, written by Paul. We do not deserve the favor of God. We're not Israelites. We're not in the covenants of the Old Testament. The Old Testament has nothing to do with us. It is about Israel and the promises and the covenants. We had no right to any of that unless God opens up the grace of, of God. Now, Paul said he was a prisoner in uh, what we were reading in 2 Timothy. Be not ashamed of me, the, the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner. And if you go to Ephesians chapter 3, you find, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. So I know that the Ephesian letter is also written in prison, and I know why he's a prisoner, because he's the apostle of Gentiles. And he's been put in prison to stop the ministry that the Lord wants. The Lord in Paul's ministry would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus Christ, when he came in the world, the virgin birth was assigned to Israel. He did not come in the world by knowledge of man to save us. That's only going to be learned by the Apostle Paul. He came in the world to save his own. He came unto his own, which was Israel. He is of the tribe of Judah, and as he came into the world, the sign, the virgin birth, you cannot find when he was born date-wise. You cannot find a lot of things about that, yet the world thinks they got a handle on all of it. They ain't got nothing. And they believe that he came in the world to save us. You cannot find that unless you go to Paul. Paul's message is the one that tells us all this. And the problem with most people is they don't want to look at Paul. They want to look at Peter. Peter's message is the gospel of circumcision, which is part of the covenant. Paul's message is the gospel of the uncircumcision to those that are not in the covenants. And we have to understand that by Galatians. But in Acts 26, the Lord through Luke is going to explain why he appeared to Paul. In Acts 26, verse 13... At midday, O king, I saw in a way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. So you know that Paul did not know the Lord. He did not believe that he was raised from the dead. And here he's having a personal testimony that he is raised from the dead, okay? Now, verse 15, uh, 16. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared. Is that past tense also? I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which, I, uh, which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear, is there going to be future appearance, okay? Delivering thee from the people, which is Israel, and from the Gentiles unto whom now I what? Hold up just a second. Go to John chapter 13. So let's see what the Lord has to say about sending. This may be simple to some of you. may not. But we're going through it anyway. And if you don't like it, you can throw something at me later. And John 13, 20, red words. You know, people say, I believe in following the red words. All right, let's dig it. Verse 20, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. Now, how plain do I need to read that? Let's read it again. Maybe I interpreted it wrong. Here's my interpretation. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Who sent Jesus? God the Father. Did Jesus send somebody? 
I didn't say that. Did Jesus send somebody? Turn to Matthew chapter 10. Again, believe the Bible means what it says. In Matthew chapter 10, the first four verses list the 12 apostles, which are 12 disciples. Remember, I told you time and again, all apostles are disciples, but not all disciples are apostles. Apostles are special calling. Now, verse 5, these 12 Jesus, next word, sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of who? Then why would I go there for directions? The 12 apostles' ministry are from Acts 1 to about Acts 10, up to about 15 in a mix between them and Paul. Who are they sent to? Jews. How do I know? Let's read on. He said, These twelve Jesus sent forth, command them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter not. The Samaritans were the intermarried Jew and Gentile, and he said, Don't go to them either. Now you're talking about purity here. Israelites and not mixed marriage. Right? Jews were commanded not to marry one of another nation. They were God's people. They were his wife, and on and on. But they have come to a point that they're going to kill the Messiah. And I'm not anti-Jewish. Don't you leave here and say that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. They're going to come to a time when God is going to cast them down for a time. They still have promises to be fulfilled with God. But he calls the time that he casts them down the dispensation of the grace of God. When he is dealing with all men by grace, no matter whether you're Jew, Greek, bond free, male or female, it does not matter. Now read this again, verse seven, uh, 6. But rather go to who? Then who did he send them to? Matthew 15. All right, so did Jesus send the 12 to the lost sheep? Okay. Barely, barely. Whosoever I send, you receive him, you receive me. Who should have received the apostles? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. You read it? It's there. Matthew 15. Look with me in verse 22. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, the son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. He won't have anything to do with her. Who's he sent to? And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after her. Who were they sent to? Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. How come I don't hear that on radio and TV? It's there. Is it not? Okay. Look what he calls us. In the next two verses. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It's not me to take the children, which is Israel's, bread, that's their gospel, and cast it to what? <coughs> Guess what we are in the eyes of God in the Old Testament? Dogs. All right. Then go back to Acts 26. Now, John 13, 20, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever I send, you receive him, you receive me. Somebody said, I believe in following the red words of Christ. You ain't never followed the red words of Christ, and you never will follow the red words of Christ. There are several verses that you're going to deny and have denied in your life. People say, I just don't like you, Brother Jerry. That's not, that's not even fair. Everybody loves me. <laughs> Acts 26. Verse 17, somebody said I was, I was a nut, and I said I'm screwed on the right bolt, though. Verse 17, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I what? I have a man sent by the Lord to the Gentiles. Correct? Okay, so what's he going to do? Verse 18, to open their eyes. There have been people all your life that have tried to open your eyes with Peter's message. 
You know what Peter's message is? Repent. Paul never wants to tell you to repent. Let's see. Uh, hold on, turn that down, go to Acts 2. And get Galatians chapter 2. The greatest thing that will ever happen in your life is when you see these two gospels are not the same. Then you make your decision why the Lord appeared to Paul. All right, Acts 2 and Galatians 2. Now let's read Galatians 2 first to get an idea on this. In Galatians chapter 2, <clears throat> now in Matthew 16, the Lord gave the keys or would give the keys to uh, Peter. And he is, in other words, this is the man he's going to send out. Peter has, basically it looks like the most power of all of them in the fact that he is the chief speaker. Okay? Can he heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers? Can he read minds? Acts chapter 5. Yeah. Then, does this man have the power to shake the dust off his feet if he goes in the house? Does he have the power to shake hands or bind them on earth and bind them in heaven? That's all given to Peter, right? Okay. How intelligent then is he with the words that was taught to him in John 17 when he walked with the Lord for three and a half years? How intelligent is he once the spirit is given to him after the Lord rises, breathes on him, how intelligent is he in the scriptures? Okay. okay. I'm just asking. You know, I ain't going to follow it to you. You say yes or no, or I don't. I think he's dumb, ignorant, or whatever. Is Peter highly intelligent in the scripture once the spirit is given to him, breathed on him? Okay. In Acts chapter, or Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas. Now, this is Paul. He wrote the letter and took Titus with me also. Where, <clears throat> what was the first book we read out of today? Titus. Okay? And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Then what does Peter not know? Somebody said, well, he didn't say Peter. Well, let's just see. Verse 9, and when James Cephas, who is Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to who? Who was Paul known to be going to? Let's go back to chapter 1, Galatians 1, verse 15. But when somebody said, Where are the heathen? Well, they're in First Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Catholic. They're all in there. They're the heathen. They're the Gentiles. The same word, Gentile and heathen. It just reflects on the fact that a heathen could also be even a Jew if he wasn't circumcised. Heathens, folks. They're not in the covenant. Somebody said, What's the covenant? Number one would be circumcision. Somebody said, are we going to have a circumcision party? And I said, I'm not. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I went through the whole thing one time in a Bible class about circumcision and showed them what it was in the scripture. And the guy right after me said, and I, I, I how he missed it. And he said, do we need to be circumcised? I said, well, you're asleep the whole class? Verse 15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Now listen real close to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among who? The heathen. Who is going to preach among the heathen? Then if we can grasp a hold of what Paul is going to preach, we'll know it's ours. Now watch, chapter 2, verse one, uh, 2. I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. The Gentiles are the heathen, right? That's what he said he was going to do in verse 15 of chapter 1, was it not? Yes or no in 16? Okay. 
Verse 7. But contra- Well, no, let's go back to 6. But of those who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they are, it maketh no matter. May God accept no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Paul never walked with the Lord. He never heard the words taught in the three and a half ministries. He has none of those words. He has revelation from God, from his son. Now you grasp a hold of that, folks. He never walked with the Lord. He hated the Lord. He hated the fact that people were teaching he was resurrected. He was part of the Jews that said, we have no king but Caesar. Crucify him. <coughs> all right, so here's a man that's never been taught the words, and all of a sudden he writes more letters in the Bible than anybody. you got to think about that, don't you? <coughs> he wrote 13 letters. Romans through Philemon. Wouldn't it be something if 13 letters, Romans through Philemon, Gentiles being the number 13 in the Bible, was taken out of your Bible? I wonder what had happened. Well, you'd have Peter, and then you'd have Hebrews, which Peter was a Hebrew. And then you'd go into the tribulation, and then you'd go into millennial kingdom without the 13 letters it's a mystery now watch verse 7 but contrawise when they saw now every time I read the word gospel raise your hand leave it up everybody agree every time I read the word gospel you raise your hand leave it up fair enough we're going to go through a math class here verse 7 but contrawise when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision, okay, got one arm up, okay, was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. How many arms you got up? You guys are passing great. You got two gospels in that verse. Let's see what they are. Acts chapter 2, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and Acts 2. Well, let's get some basis of what we're going to show you here. First, in Acts chapter 2 is the day of Pentecost. Most people call themselves Pentecost don't even know what a Pentecost is. A Pentecost ain't a person. It's a Jewish feast day. It's the 50 days after the Passover. Gentiles weren't allowed at Passover. Gentiles weren't allowed at Pentecost. In the Old Testament, you'll find it to be fact. A Gentile can't go to Passover. Passover had nothing to do with them. Can't go to Pentecost. Got nothing to do with them. But people call themselves Pentecostal. Well, then you must be a full-blooded Jew. But you're not. Somebody's told you to call yourself that because they want you to receive the spirit of Pentecost and the spirit of Pentecost was given to the 12 apostles who were sent to who? Amen, praise God. All right, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, okay, the tongues were beginning to be spoke. There were people, there were Jews from all parts of the land that were there, the males appearing at Pentecost, and they spoke different languages. You got 12 men, and so this group of language, this group of language, this group of language are all sitting together because they came from that area. Well, a man would jump up, and he'd speak in that language. Not an unknown tongue, another tongue. Another man would step up, he'd speak in that language. No one would speak in that language. They thought they were drunk because the one that's speaking to that group, the others over here don't understand it. But they're not going to be left out because another man's going to step up I mean, these guys go overseas today, and they got to have an interpreter. Liar, liar, pants on fire. If you had the Spirit of God like they say they did, they'd go over and speak in that language and not even know where it came from. But they don't believe the book. Paul said Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 14, tongues are for a sign. So who would it be to? That's pretty weak. Who, who, who needs tongues? 
First Corinthians, Paul said there'll be a time come when tongues shall cease. Then I bet they will. Now watch. Let's see who Peter's speaking to. Verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice and said unto them, You men of who? Who? Judea. Verse 22. Let's see who they are. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, man approved to God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs. What do they require? Amen. Verse 36. And from 22 to verse 33, Peter shows that Jesus Christ's soul went to hell. Very clearly. Stating it. It's right there in front of you if you read it. Jesus Christ went to hell. Say, well, he died on a cross. That was his body. His body didn't seek for us and it was raised the third day. His soul went into hell and for three days suffered the flame and the torture of a week 15. He came up on the third day, not seeing corruption of his body, got into the body, went to the Father. Now we'll look at that in just a minute. But now watch, 36. Therefore let all the house of of Gentiles. <laughs> no, it's Israel, folks. The message is to Israel. Know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. How did he make him Lord and Christ? He raised him from the dead. Resurrection. Now, verse 37. When they heard this, who's they? House of, house of Israel. They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto him, Repent. What's Peter's message? And be what? Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the gospel of circumcision right there right in front of you. Just as sure as you read it. Paul said it is and Peter said it is. 1 Corinthians 15. I heard one of the illustrious Baptist preachers who's dead now preach that, and he said, uh, repent because you have forgiveness of sins. Changed the whole words. And he said, be baptized as a recognition that you believed. That is not what that verse says. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. And you shall receive what? I just got to do this before I read. I'm going to come to 1 Corinthians, Mark 16. I was baptized when I was 13 years old, and it, did nothing, it just didn't do anything for me. And my mama knew it because she knew what I was like when I was 16. Mark 16. Now watch, in verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and they'll be the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who they sent to and you can't change that. Now watch. He that believeth and is okay do you have to be baptized to be saved in that verse? No. That verse do you have to be baptized? Who's that to? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now watch. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. How many of you were ever baptized? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed of it. Okay? You tell me, did verse 17 happen to you? Come on, I didn't hear the crowd. It didn't happen? Now you're afraid to say anything, right? I, I, I got to read it. And these signs shall follow them that? Unless it ain't yours. That passage ain't yours. It didn't happen. It ain't for you. It's for the lost sheep in the house of Israel. Come on, folks. You can look bad at me. You can hate me. You can be disgusted with me. Or you can love me to death. That's fine. But that's what it says. Amen? Then, 
what do I do with Paul? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 1 Corinthians 15. Do we believe the word sent? If Jesus sends Paul, then what's going to happen when we read Acts 26? It's going to happen, okay? I want Acts 26 and 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 1, and I want Act, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. All right, Acts 26, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 15. I want to see if it'll work. A man told me to walk the aisle. But he never explained it to me. A man told me to do this, but he never explained it to me. He said it's the way of the church. What church? His church? First Corinthians chapter 1. Was Saul, Paul sent? Was he sent by Christ? First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize. Yes or no? Guess what he didn't send him to do? Okay, now watch. But to preach the gospel. I ask people if they're saved all the time. They say yes. Then why I ask them how do they know or what happened to them there, it, it stopped right there. be saved is to be saved from something. According to what we read in Timothy, I'm saved from death. Why? The appearing to Paul abolished death. You say, well, Brother Jerry, you're crazy, man. Everybody in this room is probably going to die one day. And you're not if you're saved, you can go to sleep, but you can't die. Because the wage of sin, Adam, is death. But the gift of watch. Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. The cross is Paul's preaching. The ministry of Paul, the gospel of the uncircumcision, the cross, the ministry of Peter, the gospel of the circumcision, is the tree. For the tree represents the law and the cross represents grace. Now watch. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15. Now, did we read Peter's gospel? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Who was that to? Called the circumcision, right? The house of Israel. The lost sheep of that house. That house is based on circumcision covenant, and the lost sheep of that house would come out by repentance and water baptism. Why? Because every one of them at the cross, at the tree, were guilty because they denied him. And Jesus Christ hung there and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. They didn't know what they were doing with that tree and that murder and that crucifixion for you. You are the saddest looking group I ever saw in my life. Jesus Christ did what 1 Corinthians 15 says. Paul's gospel. Now watch, verse 1. More, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. What do you think he's fixing to do? Why can't the preachers take you to this and this alone and tell you it's your gospel? I'll show you why in just a second. More, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and where you stand, by which also you are what? Saved. Say it again. Saved. Goober. Say it again. <laughs> Saved? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, the world is full of vain believers. Oh, they can quote verse 3 and 4 when you tell it to them. But they do not depend. They do not depend on 3 and 4 to be their salvation. Why? You've got to live a good life. You've got to turn from your sin. You've got to confess your sin.